Welcome to Alouette's Flight Deck, a podcast dedicated to Montreal Alouette's football, presented by Sport Buff. I'm your host, Tim Capper. Hello, the Cliffy D. Hey, so uh, what'd you do in your off week? Because, you know, oh. after, after this, you have to go for the rest of the season, you know? That's it. We're, we're going hard now for the rest of the season, just like the Alouettes are going to be going hard all the way to December. That's right, baby. Tim. Yes. And we're, and we're going to be going hard, too. So we... I think we're all we're all relaxed, we're all refreshed, we're recharged, we're we're ready to roll, and uh, yeah, I'm excited at the pos- the possibility and the prospect of doing a podcast all the way through to December. Yeah, would be very nice if, if that's what we got to do. That's what very we're going to do. Very nice. Um, yes, but I, it it does. You know, I remember. You know, I think was it last year? No, two years ago. Two years ago, where we did for the bye week, we did that special watch along, which, by the way, it's still available over in our archives over at uh, Mm -hmm. Um, We decided to do a show this week, even though, you know, thank God things popped up. (laughs) Not not the kind of news we'd like to talk about, but I suppose news is news, so we got to talk about it. And we did have a preview to do, anyways, of the game versus the BC Lions this Saturday. So, exactly. Um, So, we're just going to get this out of the way first and foremost. Uh, We were challenged by Reed over at the Mark Cast, um, a very good podcast. I've been on them. Uh, They seem to be very well respected. Seem to, they're getting into the CFL as of late, um, you know, because the XFL isn't a thing. Uh, but they read specifically challenged us to a a little wager over this week's game, and uh, it's basically a, uh, a Twitter avatar versus Twitter avatar for mm-hmm. our main accounts. So yeah, just a friendly little wager, yeah. no, you know. No one's going to lose their shirt over this. and uh, No, 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 no. Reed, Reed doesn't want to lose his brand new, authentic uh, Seattle Kraken jersey. And I wish we all, I guess we, I wish we could all make those big bucks he is to buy that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's that, that, that's what it is. By the way, just Josh and Reed, you know this. You know oh. this. No, and also to uh, Reed has now come out as uh, a big fan now of the BC Lions. Uh, he's oh wait 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 wait, wait 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 fan as in big fan or big quote in air quotes fan. Oh, that's true because he was uh, he was taken up for the Elks for a little bit, and now he's uh, all in on the BC Lions. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think loyalties can be uh, mm-hmm. can, can shift uh, at the. At the drop of a hat. Yes. At the drop of a hat. Yes. Something like that. I was trying to come up with something witty, but it just didn't come to mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to be doing the uh, that wager. And if you want to just have see a little fun of how we were going with the back and forth, uh, check out our uh, Twitter account over at Alouette's FL Deck. Uh, it, turned, it turned into wrestling. T- some wrestling... Uh, promos and, and definitely go check out the mark cast because seriously yes, these guys sure. do excellent work and uh yeah they've had tim on uh, for a great chat and uh, like i said they're they're all in on the cfl they they definitely wanted to show the love especially being down in the states too out on mm-hmm. the west coast mm-hmm. these guys are all in on the cfl they're all in on football in general so definitely check out the mark cast uh and tell them the yellow flight tech center yeah for sure hey when we made a special appearance on last week's show too with the the arrival of our merch and would it be funny if he wore it this week? Wouldn't he? Oh, I sh- we should have included that with the wager anyways. <laughs> uh, man. Doesn't matter. He owns the shirt now anyways. So, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Go check him out. Uh, so, you know, no game this week, yes. Uh, no game last week, yes. Um. But there was some stuff that came over the wire, which we're going to talk about before we get to the to the big news and the you know and, and talking about the uh, uh, the matchup this week versus the Lions. Um, just dropped the other day, and, and it's funny how these teams seem to drop. We've been lucky the past couple of weeks, I guess, lucky as podcasters that this type of news this this news has been able to drop where we've been able to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But it came out yesterday that 
Coach Kahari Jones tested positive after returning from the bye week. And few people are talking within within media and stuff like that how much this this should I would say concern Owls fans. Um but that's what we're that's what we're here to talk about. Now, obviously, first and foremost, for what we heard today with his interviews that he had on TSN uh, six ninety, and uh, same thing with uh, our GM Danny Matocha. He he was on TSN six ninety today too, talking about what was going to be happening. But first and foremost, we want to make we're happy to hear that Coach Kahari is uh, he's feeling good. That that's that's the main thing. That's the main thing, and you know we can only speculate with him heading to be back for BC, back to BC for his uh, to, during the bye week, and then heading to Toronto uh, to see a family member. It's, it's very possible that's that that may have been where it was where it was caught. Possible, um, but anyways, I mean, but th- that's that's the thing too, and I think beyond that, it's it's going to be a little weird. Uh, not seeing Coach Kahari on, on the sidelines, but it was also interesting to hear yes and no, I guess. So it's kind of surprising, but not really who we're going to be having as the as our interim head coach this week. Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm really curious to see how it's going to work out. Uh, now uh, with Kahari essentially being forced to isolate and not be in the stadium this coming Saturday, it's going to be uh, running backs coach and assistant head coach Andre Bolduc who will be uh, leading the leading the charge uh, against the BC Lions on Saturday. Yeah, a uh, little bit interesting because he does have a fair bit of coaching experience. Uh, he was with the uh, Very Aura of uh, Sherbrooke as well. Listen, uh, cut his teeth pretty much with the Alouettes, though, as far as CFL experience goes. Uh, this is now his his chance to. Uh, to call the shots, so to speak. Although it has, it was stated uh, by multiple media sources that Kahari would be still very much in contact with the coaching staff, working with them virtually as much as possible, and he'll he'll still have a say as far as uh, the plays that are going to be called uh, this coming Saturday. It's just it's going to be Andre now that's going to be the one holding the challenge flag, so to speak, and the the headset. So I, I've got faith in Andre. He's he does a, a very good job. I mean he's. One of the reasons why the LS uh, was able to come out with some of that razzle dazzle in 2019 with some of their crazy trick plays, those were actually his doing. Oh, okay. So, I mean, this is his chance now. His chance to show that, hey, listen, I can, I, I can drive the car if need be. So, you know, I, I'm really curious to see how this is going to work. Uh, I mean, thankfully, nobody else on the team tested positive for COVID. So, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a, you know. A, as far as far as I can tell, all systems go as far as uh, who's going to be in the lineup and all that. We still haven't received anything yet from the league as far as depth chart or any of that stuff yet. But uh, I mean, from what I can see, based on injury reports and all that, it looks like it's going to be the same group that was uh, in Ottawa two weeks ago, and just different uh, head coach. I I, I don't know if uh, Andre Bulduk's going to be expected to have his dancing shoes on like Kahari would. I but, know. Uh, I was going to say maybe they do, do it something yeah. get pre-taped. I mean, I mean, maybe we can just get like an iPad of Kahari on FaceTime and we'll just move that around a little bit. And that'll be kind of like having him him dancing on the sidelines. That's kind of sort of how it'll work, right? You know, yeah, I, I could guess do. So. What, what we have I, the technology. Why not? That's right. That's right. We have the technology. We can rebuild him. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's interesting to see. We, I read the story from Herb Zarkowski today, or was it yesterday? And what was said today by each coach Gahari and Danny Machocha. I'm not really sure who's going to be ca- technically calling the plays because I thought what was funny is that, you know, coach was asked a couple of times is, you know, will you be able to call plays in real time? You know, and obviously some said, Oh, well, that not may not, might not be able to done, be able to be done because of the 20 second delay in the broadcast or this, that, and the other. And, and, you know, my, my thought would be, uh, well, let's see. Uh, you do have Zoom. <laughs> you got Zoom. Mm-hmm. You do, you know, you have FaceTime, you got Duo, you got, and as far as I know, Cliff, those are all real time. So. Pretty much. I think it's but... doable. Whoever's going to be sitting up in, up in the booth can go and relay them down. So. I, I, I mean, I, that, that's part of the, the, the weirdness and wonderness of COVID now affecting, you know, Games like this is the fact, you know, the fact that coaches 
also are are going to be affected by by this uh, pandemic and you no, know, so you know these protocols of you know pretty much you've got to stay isolated. You you cannot be in the facility. So, mm-hmm. but how do you run a football team from home? I mean, it it's been done. I mean, uh, uh, a couple of college coaches last year tested positive for COVID, and they more or less had to uh, run the show from their house or from their or from the uh, training facilities of their respective universities. Yeah, I mean it's it's. You, know, you just figure it out, but I think uh, I have to believe that there's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of preparation in advance for this. I think Andre Bulduk is going to get as much of a heads up with everything as much as possible, working tan- in tandem with Kahari and the other coaches. I, I think it'll be fine. I, I, I th- honestly think uh, he's got a great quarterback in Vernon Adams. He's a leader. He knows what it takes to win. I think it's just a matter of just let them play and. It's gonna get. It's gonna work itself out. You brought that's truly what I think. Yeah, you brought some good points too, because you know I remember too. I think it was uh, Alabama head coach Nick Saban uh, came down with COVID for one game, and I I don't know what they did. I don't know. I don't know what was done. If he actually called the players or not, if he left it left it up to his coaching staff. But you know what people need to remember too is that um, you know Coach Kahari has three hats. He's not just the head coach. You know. He's the OC and he's the quarterback. He's the quarter. Is he quarterback's coach too? Yep. So they got to spread some of the stuff around. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we can. There isn't a a, a CFL practice squad for coaches. <laughs> Gosh, could you imagine? You know. So. Well, yeah. and like I said, it's it's not it's not a case of just. You know, taking someone in off the street and telling them to coach this football team to a victory. I mean, this this entire coaching staff is well versed in football. I mean, I don't want to say you can just put anybody as a head coach and it will succeed, but I, I think if you don't have faith in your assistant head coach, the guy you've actually given the title of assistant head coach to, if you don't have faith in him to be able to call plays, then what are we doing here? Like, what 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 do you expect out of the guy? So right, and- I said I. No, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, like, just let's see what he can do. I, I mean, I, I feel very confident in the plays that he's been able to come up with as far as, you know, like I said, giving a little razzle-dazzle to the uh, the Alouettes. And I, I, he's got coaching experience from before, so I say let's let's see what's, let's see what happens. I, I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, A few of the, uh, of the Montreal media brought this up as being a potential issue. I know Joey Alfieri mentioned it in his uh, I, Lily um, uh, audio tweet. Um, What? uh, I think there can, I mean, I think for me alone, the issue could be not, again, I think it's not having Coach Kahari on the sidelines. Having, again, he has, wears three different hats we don't know who's going to back up whom. I mean, it, it may be an all totally moot thing if coach can call these plays in real time. To be fair, usually the first 15 plays are scripted anyways, give or take. Mm-hmm. So from there, after, after you know, for play 16 and on, depending on the situation, what will be done? Do you see any issues you're, that you can think of when it comes to coach not being on the sideline for this one game, because to me, it's not that he's, he's not, he's not necessarily the heart and soul. He completes the heart and soul of this Alowitz franchise right now. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I mean, yes, it's going to be different. That's, there's no question about that. Is this going to work? We honestly won't know until Saturday. I mean, it, I think it's going to be fine, quite frankly. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I mean, that's it, it really is a crapshoot. But I mean, like this is unfortunately the hand that the Alouettes have been dealt. And really, you just have to have faith in your football people. And that's the one thing I've said numerous times is that these are professionals. They know what they're doing. And I I know that this coaching staff, we've, we've spoken with Kahari in the past. We've spoken with uh, Robert Gordon. Like these guys are work, live, breathe, sleep, eat together practically. <laughs> well, not 
one hundred percent, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. with the COVID era. But I mean, like th- this is a very tight knit group as well. And the one thing they've talked about numerous times is working hand in hand with each other at Olympic Stadium, coming up with the plays, coming up with the strategies. You know, th- going through the personnel and you know just all the things that a good coaching staff does. Like this is a family. And when when, when someone goes down like this, when someone can't be there for whatever reason, be it medical or otherwise, I fully expect everybody else to step up and say, okay, we got this. We know what we, we, we know the score. We know what's going on. It's just a matter of go out and do it. And I think the players too have to trust their, their respective coaches as far as them being able to do whatever it's going to take to ensure a victory in the Canadian football league. So I mean, yes, it's concerning, absolutely, and you know we're we're definitely concerned for Coach Kahari, but I really truly think there's nothing really to worry about as far as the actual execution of plays goes. And I think I, I truly think everything's going to be fine. I think Andre will do a respectable job as interim head coach, or. You know, still as assistant head coach. I don't know how. They, yeah, I was going to ask. I don't you know about, how they do that, but <laughs> yeah, I was going to say how does how does the CFL? I need to speak with the CFL stats guru Steve Daniel about this. How does the CFL see this? How do the record? How will the record books look at this? Is he considered the coach of record? If when the Alps win <laughs> for for Reed over BC, will he be credited with the W? Yeah. I'd say yes, honestly. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I I just don't know if you give it another title, like acting head coach or just assistant head coach or what. But well, I Kahari mean, got all the wins when he was interim, right? But we knew he was interim head coach. They right, made it clear right. he was. Whereas he hasn't lost, like Kahari hasn't lost his job. He's just unable to perform, right? And Andre Bolduc will now step in as as such, but I I don't know how they would consider that. I guess uh, Steve will have to let us know as far as. Uh, as far as like, I mean, it's semantics. At the end of the day, we know who's going to be helping the Alouettes win this game uh, on Saturday. But uh, yeah, yeah. like I said, this is just you know minutia as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But you know, I'm curious if if I get an update, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, either I'll put it on our socials, whether it be through our I Lily, either Cliffs or our my I Lily uh, account, uh, or through our Twitter account. So we'll. Uh, which is Cliff at, at Cliffy D and mine is at Repact, R E P P A C T. Um, beyond that, from what we've seen, you know, with the any surprises that you saw this week that are concerning when because actually I actually was quite happy to see what, with what the uh, uh, injury reports were. It's funny to say that. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it's funny to say it that way, but the injury reports were actually. As I said, they were in, they were encouraging because there really weren't that big issues. I mean, it looks like what we'll find out when the you know when the death charts come out. But Tony Washington is full participation, mm-hmm. and Antonio Simmons as well is mm-hmm. uh, is participating again. So that's that's very encouraging as well. I mean, listen, their replacements in in Ottawa did a, an admirable job admirable job as far as i'm concerned yeah but these are two big time players that you want to make sure are in the lineup if if they're ready to go you want them in there you want them playing especially a game like this knowing full well that the head coach is not available so you want you want to have you you want to put your best foot forward you want to make sure you have all hands on deck that are ready to go so this is very encouraging news Uh, like i said we'll we'll see what the final rosters say but uh, if uh, washington and simmons are able to go that's a huge boost for the Montreal Alouettes. For sure. And by the way, I, I'll have to watch this. I never even thought about thought about this when I was seeing the the injury reports over the past couple of weeks. If it when it shows that somebody is currently a healthy scratch and they're even though they're still participating, does that mean mm-hmm. that they're going to be a healthy? Does that mean from the previous week or does that mean the current week? Previous week. Al's run, we're on a bye. Right, but it carries over. Hmm. Well, I mean, you can't announce your health. You, you really can't announce your healthy scratches until you set your roster. So, okay, got yeah, true. I'd have to see what it was for Tuesday. What there? Because so, they didn't they didn't practice on 
Monday. I'm curious to know if Cameron Artis Payne and both Quan Bray will, will be healthy scratches again. Well, Which I'm wondering, again, I'm wondering if it's foreshadowing what it's already going to be. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but... Well, and that's that's the beauty of practice is this is where you you figure these things out like who who you think is worthy of getting into the lineup and who should be uh, taking a seat. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we we hate using the expression "had a good week at practice," but oh, I mean, if yes. yeah, I know it's a kiss of death. But <laughs> I mean, literally, if a guy literally had a good week at practice, then it it makes you wonder like, okay, is this someone that we really want in the lineup, or is this or based on the fact that the last lineup that was in place. They won quite handily. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So, you know, you obviously your you, first thought would be, well, there's if nobody's injured from the previous game roster, then maybe we should get them into into the action. So, like I said, with, without seeing the depth charts and uh, the final rosters uh, for this coming Saturday, we're just speculating at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean. It's like, I mean, Hamilton right now still hasn't, I guess they don't have to declare their rosters until when, so uh, you far. know what? It's very possible that if the Alois have to declare their rosters tomorrow, that they have all, may have already made their, their modifications. And again, we'll see if, if, if Washington starts, because it looks like he was, a, he was a full participant and he wasn't listed as a healthy scratch or listed as injured. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I say, we'll see once it comes out. And I said, either... Thursday or Friday it will come out. So, oh, I, I get it. I, I, again, like I said, it's like it's like Tiger Cats. They they haven't decided who's going to be theirs. Their their starting quarterback, which well, I'm sure well, the only thing they, the only thing they've decided is that Dane Evan, Evans is definitely on the injured list yeah, for, for sure. uh, yeah 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 for a few weeks yeah. So do they go with Masoli? Do they go with David Watford? Do they? make a trade and bring someone in. I mean, it's, I don't know. Hamilton's right now. They're, they're in a tough spot. Oh no, I know they are. I know they are. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't. anyways. Um, yeah, as I said, we, we wish there was more for, for this week. I mean, it's, we'll talk about the game here in a couple of minutes and, um, what is, what to look forward to. Um, but before we do, I might as well go ahead and talk about, actually, before we do, actually, uh, just to remind everybody, and as you heard at the top of the show, we are on social media, uh, many places that you can find us. Um, main place for our archives is over at uh, www.alowitzflightdeck.ca. I uh, told you about our Twitter accounts. We we keep on give, forgetting about our Facebook page. It is there. It's facebook.com slash Oh, it's flight deck. Um, also, there yeah. are many places where you can find us on many of the uh, podcast aggregates, you know, the podca- podcast hosts, so to speak, where you can find us. And we're on quite a few, aren't we, Cliff? We certainly are. Like I said, just pretty much any podcast platform you can think of. Just type in the keywords, oh, it's flight deck. And chances are you will find us there. Uh, you start with the big ones like Google Play Music, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. I'd say pretty much anyone. Just go ahead and type in Elvis Flight Tech, and I would not be surprised if you find us there. So yeah. however you want to listen to the show, there's more than enough options to do so. And let's not forget, Tim, we are also on YouTube. That's right. That's right. We're on YouTube. We're, uh, and we're having fun with YouTube. I say we got many things that we want to try to do this year might not be able to be done because of the COVID situation, but stay tuned. But hey. If you are hit, you are there, just head over to YouTube. Do a search for Alouette's Flight Deck because we are still trying to get to that 100 subscriber count where we can have a regular and a normal URL. So head over there, look up, says do a search for Alouette's Flight Deck, like us, subscribe, get us to that 100. And as I keep rem- reminding everybody, as soon as we do get to 100, we're also going to have another giveaway to help us get to 100 and earn some free swag. Mm-hmm. One person. And, uh, yes. <laughs> I was also going to say, let's not also forget, we are a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Mm-hmm. Lots of great shows out there, and we're extremely proud and humbled to be a member of that association. So check out uh, at CF Pod Network on Twitter. 
check out all the other great shows in addition to ours and uh, show the love to all the great podcasters that are out there. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree with you. Before we get to talking about um, this week's matchup, just some interesting tidbits. Like, you know, Cliffy, I'm not. The, and I know you've always said I'm the stats stats guy and stuff like that, but I'm also very into the history of the Alouettes and stuff like that. Um, I was just doing. I can't remember what what made me think of it to do some a little bit more research into the Alouettes. I think I think it was something to do with the Delta logo, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, cause everybody looks at different things it's like, Oh, this is when it came out. You know, this, this came out this time, this came out at this time, you know, and I, I had put out uh, something specifically on, uh, I think it was on the CFL memorabilia page over on Facebook. But what I thought was cool, um, I learned a couple of things is that, you know, everybody thinks first and foremost that the Delta logo was 1970. It wasn't. It was actually introduced in, uh, in February of 1974. Mm. But I think that's not really the interesting part. It, it, the interesting part is this. So they used the same logo that year, Cliff. And as everybody remembers with the Alouettes, you know, prior to them switching to the red, white, and blue, which has been their primary colors since, uh, since 1974, they wore green Four for four for four years. Say that a couple of times fast. <laughs> four for four years. <laughs> for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For four years. Um, that year, because they didn't have, they didn't have enough uniforms. Because they actually, I just found out that they played a. You know, everybody in at that time of the of the CFL played four preseason games. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no kidding. It sounds awful. I to think be they played. With you. They, they played Hamilton in '74 as their first one, and then they played Winnipeg in Winnipeg. I think it was two days later. Two, mm. two. Oh, old CFL. Yeah, yeah, crazy people. <sighs> uh, and, then, and then you hear all these entitled millennials bellyaching that the Elks are going to have to pay, play three games in seven days. Oh, my heart breaks hey, for you. If that's the case, the same thing with the Red Blacks this year. You know, it's a uh, three and three and ten. In ten, yeah. Just think about it, guys. For once, you'll be able to see throw old school throwback CFL football. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I found out was was pretty cool, and this is for you. Oh, I, 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 is there an official word for this? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but anyways, for you guys who like uniforms and that type of stuff. Aficionados? Th- yeah, there's a word, though, for it. I mean, it's like Uni- UniWatch, you know, the site UniWatch. I love that site, the UniWatch blog. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, sp- a specific word for it. Aesthetics, maybe? Is that the word? Anyways, uh, correct me. DM me, please. Um, the Alouettes, because they were not enough new uniforms and because the size of the team was so large they didn't have enough uniforms to fit everybody in their very first game versus hamilton even though that they had a a game prior to that by the way which is a rookie game which i didn't know about so they technically the alice had five games five preseason games but that was anyways you know that was the time of a of a uh uh, they were going through a a labor strife actually i think all the veterans quote-unquote quit anyways that's for another day the Owls ended up wearing their green uniforms with their new blue Delta helmet logos. Uh, do, I'll try that again. Their new blue Delta logo helmets with their green uniforms. Can you only imagine what that would look like, Cliff? Uh I mean, I'm I'm no fashionista, but oh my <laughs> gosh, the, the clashing just oh makes my god, my head yes. spin. So, and the reason why I'm telling you, yes, there is a method to my madness. If any of you out there happens to have a color photo from that July 2nd, 1974 uh, preseason game from the Autostad in Montreal, please DM me or reach out to me on Twitter because I'd like to get a, I'd like to get a copy of this because to me, 
this is Al's history. Mm. This is something I would love to see. The pictures that are cur- that were currently that I found from the, the Gazette and La Press, they're in black and white. Mm. And I haven't been able to, I, since I don't live in Hamilton, I can't check out the, the, the spectator. So, or go to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Cause... I, I've tried them too so far. I haven't heard anything back yet. Even though they have some pretty anybody, by the way, anybody who hasn't gone to this, gone to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame site, they got some pretty, they got some amazing old school photos there that you can do, you can look through. So if any any of you are are high on uniforms for any of that type of thing, or like to see how teams used to look in color, go there because there are some unique Halouette uniforms, Ottawa uniforms too, it's the original El, uh, Elks. Uh, Eskimos in their uh, gold helmets. It's a, it's pretty sweet. It really is. So yeah, if you have any, if if you know where I can get that a photo like that, or if you have access to that type of thing, please reach out to me on social media. It'd be greatly appreciated. So, um, one last thing, and I think it was announced a couple weeks ago, or maybe a, maybe a couple weeks ago, Cliff. You know, as the Alouettes have partnered with Naya this year for their bottled water at the stadium and their sports bottles, uh, the Alouettes announced that they have put the logo on the packaging now. You know, if anybody remembers, I think the Alouettes have done something like this before, Cliff. I think it's and and it's all about advertising and getting the 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 team out there and stuff like that because I, I think. At, at a one point, I think it was 96 or 97, if I remember correctly, I should know because I still have the can, is that the Alouettes partnered with Budweiser and put their logo on the can. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that, Cliff. I do. Um, um, have they done it with – Yeah, they did, did they do it with hot dogs? Lester's hot dogs? Lester's hot dogs, too. On the uh, the sleeves that they would uh, hand out the hot dogs, you can definitely find an Alouettes logo on those. I thought they had them also on 8 or 12 packs or whatever they sold in, in store. I thought they had the logo on there too. Uh, yes, yes, they did that as well. At some point. Mm-hmm. But the Alouettes are basically doing the same thing now with Nile Water. Uh, you can get over, head over to the Alouettes webpage and they have a couple of pictures there uh, of what it would look like. Now, the one thing that I thought was funny, by the way, is they're talking about how, you know, you can go, they, they've been serving the, I think it's like, oh yeah, there's 750 milliliter bottles, I think. Mm-hmm. It's their sport bottle, so it has that specific top on them. Where I think it's a twist top or something like that. You can open it up, squirt it in your mouth, and then close it. That type of thing. Right. They take those things away from you in stadium. <laughs> yes. What's the point? Well, because of the rule that you can't have a caps beverage. Ah, you know, it's not like it's a coke. What are we gonna do? Oh well. You can still toss. You can still toss a plastic bottle onto the field. You could, but you'd have to have a hell of an arm to do so. <laughs> I get. It. I mean, I, I think it's a cool idea. You know, it, it's right up there with uh, them partnering with Nolanor and putting that oh, putting that logo on that plane, man. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so yes, indeed. So yeah, if, you, if you haven't seen it, I think they're going to be in in store at stadium. So yeah, it was it was in March. It was March when they announced it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, other than that, you know, we got the game coming up this week. A couple of things that the Owls are going to be doing is they are going to be having some stuff during the game uh, for uh, former Alouette's owner, Bob Wettenall, some uh, uh, look, look backs and some and memoriams and stuff like that, which I think is a fantastic idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think, what did, did they announce anything? Oh, yeah, we have uh, uh, our Olympians. Our Quebec-born Olympians are going to be there. I think they said 25 of them, which is amazing. It's very cool. I love I love it every time that they that they come out for either the winters or the summer Olympics. That, that's pretty cool to see all their uh, all their nice hardware that they would have won. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the big thing before we get to the actual preview is please remember that this fr- this Saturday's game, which starts at seven p.m. Eastern, is the very first game where the Quebec vaccine passport will be in effect. They will be doing from what we've been told by the team is that they will be doing the testing of your passport and your ID. So make sure you have that available 
depending on where you go in, whichever stadium uh, entrance you go into is where they would normally check your bags. Mm -hmm. That's where they're going to check your passport uh, status and your ID. And then after that, you can switch over to the digital ticket, switch over to your browser and be able, be able to show them your, your other QR code in order to get in. Mm -hmm. And my understanding, too, is if you are coming in from out of town, if you're from outside of the province of Quebec and still coming to the Isle of West game, uh, they will accept other forms of uh, like, like proof of uh, vaccination will be accepted as well. Good. That's good to hear, actually. I was, I, was wondering. I, I, I don't know if anybody's uh, coming in from Vancouver to see the, the BC Lions play, but uh, if you bring bring your mask and make sure you've got some sort of proof of your your vaccination. Exactly. So BC, uh, as we know, the Alouettes are coming off of a bye week. Uh, the Owls are since 2002 when the bye weeks really became a thing, an official thing in the CFL. The Owls are only a 16 and 16 since 2002, and they're two and five off of a off one of these uh, games following a bye week. They're only two and five versus the BC Lions. Mm -hmm. Doesn't I, don't, I know it doesn't mean much, but it's still it's something to think about. Mm -hmm. um, but but they're also eight, four, and one all time coming off of the bye week. What do you mean? Eight who? The Alouettes. Eight, four, and one coming off of a bye week? Yes. No, they're 16 and 16. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're talking about all time. I'm talking about like, most recently. Sorry, oh. I should have. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got ahead of myself here. I was this like, why, this, where this are you going the, with this, Cliffy? <laughs> this is why you're the stats guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'd have to go back and yeah, but but it, to be fair, the I think the Alouettes are like four out of their last ten. I think it's what it was. So, well, that's it. It's anyways. just. Uh, I mean, the, the best example of this, uh, and it counts actually, is the, their last victory coming off a of bye was week two versus the Elks because they were on the bye week for the first week of the season. That is so, true. That is true, sir. So they do kind of have a uh, a winning streak of sorts, <laughs> I guess, if one game counts as a winning streak. Well, they and they, well, their last bye week of 2019 was versus BC Lions, if I remember correctly. I believe that, uh, yep, that is correct. Yeah. So, which they won. So, so there, there's something to be said about uh, playing the BC Lions coming off of a bye. So that's... At least recently. <laughs> recently, yes. <laughs> and let's not forget, too, there won't be any game at BC Plays, which is pretty much guaranteed win night for the BC Lions. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah no kidding. If the Lions are going to win for uh, our buddy Reed, I mean, they're going to have to work their asses off. That's... That's that's mm -hmm. what's going to come down to. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes, it is true. I mean, I mean, most Western teams have had a horrible time winning in Montreal. And it doesn't get much more Western than BC, like which is the the furthest West team coming in, all the way across the country to play the easternmost team. Mm -hmm. So, right. I mean, but again, they're going to be prepared. That's that's, that's where it comes down to, and they've got great momentum too. Like they played yeah. the Ottawa Red Blacks last Saturday, and as well they, as we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, two weeks period, and that's. Yeah. But again, those games, folks, you really have to consider as outliers because Ottawa right now is in a shambles. <laughs> I mean, yes, the 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 Lions were able to pace the the Red Blacks, same as what the Alouettes did two weeks ago. But uh, I, I don't think you can, you know, hang your hat on that particular game as far as whether or not the BC Lions are going to be a formidable opponent. They will be. There's no question that, uh, you know, they're a very good team, but you can't look at them and assume that, oh, this is going to be an easy win for the Lions based on the, what they did against the, the Red Blacks. Same as with the Alouettes. Yeah, they played a great game against them and won very handily, but they've also got that bye week in, in between. So will that, will that have slowed down any of that momentum? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, for, for sure. It's, I'm curious to know how much rust that the Alouettes may have. Uh, coming out of the gate at first, um, but I, I, guess, I guess we'll see. I mean, as long as I mean, if VA stays as sharp as he was versus Ottawa, it's going to be a fun game. It really is. Absolutely, and I think the competition with uh, him versus Michael Riley is definitely going to up his game. I, I think he's going to be challenged to 
you know, to be at his level. Because let's face it, Michael Riley, when he's on, he is on. He is definitely, as I've said, one of the premier quarterbacks in this league. And he, too, had himself a really good night against the Ottawa Red Blacks. Uh, he, he threw for numerous touchdowns. Uh, he made it look easy. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm curious to see how he stacks up against this uh, offense, uh, defensive line for the Alouettes. Because you know they're going to be hungry. They're going to be motivated to, to prove that they are who they say they are. Yeah. So I, I expect uh, BC's O line to definitely get a workout as well because they're going to have to try and keep Riley up, right? If they if the Lions are going to have any chance of beating the Alouettes, it's going to have to be because Riley is torching the secondary. Yeah, he's going to have to he's going to have to huck it downfield, and you know he can do that, and he showed he can do that uh, against Ottawa. So he'll be looking to do the same thing in Montreal. I think this is where the, this Alouettes defense is really going to be tested, and I think they'll pass the test. I think they'll definitely. Keep him honest and definitely try to make life miserable for him, just like they did against uh, the Red Blacks is Matt Nichols and Dominique Davis. So I think this is going to be a very fun game, all things considered, especially to throwing in the wrinkle of not having Kahari Jones on the sidelines, who also, too, was a coach for the BC Lions back in the day. Uh, and also a Vancouver native. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think he was really looking forward to being a part of this game for those reasons. And now, unfortunately, he can't be. So, but he'll be there virtually. He'll be there in spirit. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it's going to be interesting. Let's let's just leave it at that. That's true. Uh, BC in Montreal in the regular season is 20, is uh, 14, 26, 14 and 26. Mm. So BC has not done that well in Montreal. So even though they split, they split the last 10, mm-hmm. but still, still. No. And I, and I said that it's a lot of people think uh, BC is one of the, the better teams in this league. And they, they certainly have proven themselves, you know, at least even, even losing efforts, they've proven themselves to be fighting, uh, a fighting football team. So not fighting like Andrew Harris, but <laughs> don't get me started on why he wasn't tossed by the way. <laughs> I mean, I understand why V, uh, but mind you, VA should have been tossed too. But actually, the the league hasn't come out. With, we're getting off topic here. Sorry, um, but looking at what what is what do the Owls need to do, Cliff, to stay to to get this win and to go to go three two on the season and to at least at that at that moment, it's very possible that the Alouettes could be tied for first place. Mm-hmm. Really, truly, it does start at the quarterback position for the BC Lions. You cut off the head and the body dies. So you've got to get to Michael Riley. you just got to get right in his kitchen and just disrupt him as much as possible. Uh, this receiving core for BC is extremely talented. They've got some some great weapons there. And also, too, special teams is going to be a factor as well. Lucky Whitehead, has he had an amazing 119-yard touchdown, like re- punt return for touchdown against the Red Blacks. I mean... Especially too with Mario Alford uh, kind of cooling down a little bit, or this could be the game where he he reignites himself. I, I think special teams is definitely something that you're going to pay attention to, especially with the BC Lions mm-hmm. and Lucky Whitehead. But I think really truly it starts at the quarterback position. You've got to be able to get to Michael Riley. You have got to get in his face. You got to make him uncomfortable. Make him make bad decisions because he he knows how to win. He knows how to win football games. Uh, he's won in Montreal before, uh, whether he was playing for Edmonton or for BC. He knows what it's going to take. And he knows right now, like Montreal and BC are both teams that fans believe in. But you you have to wonder, are they who they say they are? Like, are can they can they bring the can they match up the hype that's surrounding them? Yeah, I think they can. I think both of these teams are very good at producing and I guess it's really going to come down to who makes the fewest mistakes, who gets the least penalties, and who can execute their game plan. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think Montreal can beat BC. I must because we did the we did the bet. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I think really what it's going to come down to though is just how VA manages this game. I, I don't expect them to be a game manager. I expect him. I expect to see that gunslinger that we saw out in Ottawa. Uh, I really want to see him light up BC secondary and. I, I think that uh, if if we get the ground game going again, we get William Stanback those those reps that he needs to make over a hundred yards on the ground. Mm-hmm. 
I, I think that's going to bode very well for Montreal. I, I think, uh, you know, BC is a great team, but they're beatable. They've proven that. Montreal's a great team, but they're beatable. So it yeah. really is going to, I think it's just going to come down to overall execution. Who can make the fewest mistakes? Who can take the least number of penalties? And who can work their plan to victory? That's really what it's going to come down to for either of these teams. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it, the big thing will be on uh, with VA making sure that he stays the exact same way that he was the other day, uh, the, the other week. Um, just to stay consistent. And the defense has been looking absolutely amazing. I mean, <laughs> they just got to continue uh, get again. If they can, I think if they can get get to Michael Riley at least uh, at least four to five times. I, I think the Alouettes will be will be able to come away with with a win quite easily. Not well. Big, with the defensive help, they'll be able to come away with a win in this one. I, I think what's going to be key to, though is guys like Patrick Levels, Greg Reed, uh, Money Hunter. Like these are the guys that will get in his face and and disrupt things. I, I think if uh, if they can do that and they can keep uh, BC receivers in check, it could make for a very long night for uh, for Mister Riley. Yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah. Game. Don't again. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy the game. We're, we're gonna have fun. It's a uh, Saturday. Saturday football, baby. Saturday. Saturday. Football. Saturday football. And uh, I, I'm excited. To, uh, like I said, I believe it or not, I, this this will, I think will be my first time trying to use the vaccine passport. So I'm curious oh, to really? see how well. It, yeah. I've used it. I've used it twice so far. Okay. No issues. No issues. That. Listen, that's great. So and, I'm, I'm and hoping still, it's the same and thing. still, you know, I've showed these people, and I'm like, you know, Tim Capper, Alouette Fight Tech Podcast. I get a look. They're like, who? <laughs> well. You know, with Cliffy D. Oh, Cliff, I know him. <laughs> Gosh, I hope it doesn't come to that for you. Oh man. <laughs> like, oh, that jerk. <laughs> yeah. Um. Quickly, and we'll talk about it more. I think a little bit next week, since it was something that just came up. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary, Cliff, since the team came to Montreal. Mm -hmm. And RDS has actually done some great stuff as of late, and we put it out on our socials. Um, a story, I think it was a story, a retrospect, a two-part retrospect by Eric LeBlanc uh, over at RDS, and he, he talks with uh, uh, one of the guys that, you know, if you watch RDS, you'll know a, a lot of the names from their... Um, you know, from their broadcast crew and, and stuff like that. So, you know, especially David Arsenault. Um, mm -hmm. He's he's their stats guy. I, I mean, he's, I, I've watched, I love following him on social media. But anyways, I mean, it's it's on our socials and you can, they've taught, it's something that I want Cliff and I to be able to go into context and, the, and a little bit more. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll, we'll be talking about uh, our memories over the last 25 years. And if you've heard us over the last six years, you know how I feel specifically about what happened in in '96, et cetera, et cetera. And you've heard some of our stories, but um, I, you know, we just want to be able to go a little bit more in context. And maybe, maybe you know, we'll reach out to David Arsenault and see if he wants to join us on the podcast and uh, uh, talk a little bit about because he's been he's been around the Alouettes for as long as I think almost as he's been with, at RDS. So, mm -hmm. uh, so well, so stay tuned for that. So, um, but other than that, I, I think Cliff. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to anything else we have on the docket this week. Not really. Just uh, like I said, now the line's been drawn in the sand uh, between us and the Mark cast. Uh, I'm really excited to see how Saturday night goes. Um, like I said, may the best team win, and we know they will. That's right. Go Owls, go! That's but right. go, uh, Owls, go. It, it's exciting to you know. It's always it's always fun to have a little uh, friendly wager between podcasts and all that, and uh, you know, it's it's going to be fun. And also, too, Saturday night football. I mean, that's that's going to be great as well. Like just, you know, like it's not Friday night lights. It's going to be Saturday night lights, I suppose. I but, wish it were uh, Saturday afternoon sun. <laughs> that'd be nice too. But, and we'll get a few of those, go those games uh, later this year. Yeah. But, uh, Next game. Thanksgiving day, baby. That's right. That's right. I and mean, you talk about tradition, like that's going to be, I'm curious to see how that's going to work because I, I like I said, with COVID being what it is, I mean, we may be able to get the the tailgate uh, with the deep fried turkey and all that good stuff, unfortunately. But uh, I need to go order my turducken hat. Ooh, a turducken hat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, like that. Uh, and you and you can I, get I'm, your shirt made up that says with an arrow pointing my way, and it says I'm with this turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I just may have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyways. 
We hope you guys enjoy the game. Uh, you know, a, a, again, follow us on social media. Uh, we're, we're here to, to interact with you guys, no matter what fan, what team you are a fan of. So uh, we really appreciate you guys for, for listening. And uh, we, will be, we will be back next week with, a, with another great show. So, so for everybody here at the Alouettes Flight Deck for Cliffy D, I'm Tim Capper. We're on Final Approach.